In this video, I'm going to teach you how to solve a 3x3 Rubik's Cube. There are lots of tutorials out there, but what makes this one unique is that I'm also going to give you tips on how to best memorize the moves so you can eventually do this with no instructions. I actually made this video for my good friend Jimmy, who basically started from scratch, and here he is just one day after watching it. Full solve cube there, right there. Boom! Told you it works. Okay, let's get into it. So I'm gonna teach you how to solve this cube layer by layer, starting from the bottom, then the middle, and finally the top layer. I was pretty happy to hear that you already knew how to solve one layer. And not just that, but solve it with the correct side colors as well. When a lot of people say they can solve one side of a cube, they often do something like this. So sure, all of the correct colors are on one side, but if you look around at the edges, it's completely wrong, and you can't keep on solving the cube like this. Now you probably didn't, but just in case you fluked it, let me really quickly show you how to solve one side of a cube correctly. So we're going to start with the white side as is convention. The first thing that we do is make a cross, or really more accurately, a plus sign. And of course, we're not just going to put any random white piece here. We're going to be informed by what this side of the cube is going to eventually become, which is green. And so if we find that white green edge lining up there, you can see quite easily how that goes in there. I'm going to do the same to blue and put blue in. Orange is a little bit tricky now because how do I get that guy in over there? A couple of ways of doing it. You might have done something like this, moving that over there and then moving that in, and then moving that back. That works. But if you think about what you just did, you actually brought that empty slot over there, put it in, and then brought it back. This is the way that I normally think about it. And finally, the white red edge. Where is that piece? Ah, oh, there it is. It's a bit annoying. There's no easy way of inserting it in there. Or is there? Check this out. Turn it like this. You might be getting green out, but once you put red in, you bring green back. Too easy. Next, we want to get the four corners in, and you might already have a pretty good way of doing it uh, that, you know, intuitively, you can sort of see how pieces can go in. But let me show you a foolproof method that's only four moves, uh, which will come in useful again later. So step one, hold the cube so that the corner that needs to be filled in is at the bottom right. Step two, find the piece that should go in there, which is this guy here, and move the top layer so that it's right above there. And step three, repeat a four move sequence that I'm gonna call the easy move until this piece is correctly put in there. What is this four move sequence you ask? Well, it looks something like this. This, 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 this. Notice that it only involves the right layer and the upper layer, and there's a really nice pattern to it. The right layer moves clockwise, the upper layer moves clockwise, and then the right layer goes anti-clockwise and the upper layer goes anti-clockwise. I'm calling it the easy move because once you get into the rhythm of it, it's really easy to do. Let me quickly say at this point that we've actually got a way of notating cube moves and it looks something like this. R means you move the right layer clockwise and R prime means you move the right layer anti-clockwise. So that easy move will look something like this. R, U, because it's upper layer clockwise. R prime, U prime. So back to this guy. It's all set up and we're just gonna do the easy move however many times it takes for this to be put in place. Here we go. And there it is. Let's quickly do it for all the other ones. Hold the empty space bottom right. Uh, and that piece conveniently is right there. So easy move and it's already in just one time. And finally, we're gonna hold the bottom right, move it so that it's over where it needs to go and easy move it in. There it is. So with the bottom layer out of the way, it's time to now move to the second layer. By the end of this step, the cube's gonna look something like this. And there is an eight move sequence. So you're gonna have to learn to put these four edges in, but it's really quite easy and I'll show you how. Okay, here we go, took those four pieces out. Let's put this guy in. So step number one, we're gonna look at the color that's over there and align it with the centerpiece over there. So orange doesn't align with there, orange aligns here. And we're gonna make this a side that faces you. This is now the front side. Next, we're gonna think about where this piece needs to go and it's to the left over here. And so we're gonna move this piece away from that, which sounds a bit weird, but that's because we're then gonna take this piece out this way. We're gonna move this piece back where it was before. And then by closing this, by putting those white bit back, look at that. We now bring these two together. Of course, now we need to put this back in there. So we're gonna do that by moving this again this way, out of the way. And then we're gonna do a front move this time to move this empty slot up, bring that in, and then do a front move to bring it back down. So let's do that again with these guys. We're gonna take that color and line it up with the center. So red needs to line up here. Just like the last time, it needs to go this way. And you might be thinking, hey, there's a little cheeky guy in there, but don't worry, you'll get kicked out once we put this one in. So once again, we're gonna start by moving this guy away from where it needs to go. We're gonna open this one up like that, move this guy back, and then close these white pieces back down. 
which pairs them. Move this out of the way that way. Front move to bring this empty slot up. Put that into the slot and then front move back down. All right, let's keep going a little bit quicker. So this guy needs to go there, out of the way, up, back, paired together, out of the way that way, front, together, and in, leaving this one. So we're gonna pair it up with the colors on its correct side, and this time needs to go to the right, but it's the same moves as before, I guess just mirrored. So we're gonna start by moving it away from where it needs to go. We're gonna open this slot up, bring this guy back, and then close this white slot. There it is, it's paired. This time we're gonna move it over here, not that way like it was before. And then an F move in this direction to bring that slot up, bring this guy in, down he goes. Second stage done. Now there's actually a tiny chance that after finishing that, the top of the cube looks something like this, but it probably doesn't. More likely it looks something like this. And so the next step is to make all of these yellow pieces orient upwards so this top face is completely yellow. Now you probably won't get there in one move, and so the goal here is to get it into this specific shape, which I'm gonna call the fish. And the way you do that is actually surprisingly simple. There's a six move sequence that you can repeat as many times as you need to that looks like this. F, so that's the front face clockwise, that easy move from before, so this, and then undo that F move, so F anti-clockwise, and there you go. Okay, this doesn't look exactly like the fish, but I can turn it into that later. The point here is that I've got this yellow cross, the yellow plus sign. Now I'm just gonna undo that move to show you that that F easy move and then F anti-clockwise sequence really only works when you've got this straight line of yellow pieces. We're gonna ignore the corners for now because we're just interested in getting that, that plus sign. So the question is, how do you make these guys so that they've got that yellow line in the middle? Well, here are the rules. If the only part of the yellow cross is that one in the middle, just do the move however you're holding it. So F easy move, undo the F, and then you'll get this. This, believe it or not, is actually the exact same case as this because if you ignore the corners, it's exactly the same. Well, it's the same if it's this way. And this is actually the way that you need to hold it next. So you wanna move this upper face until it's nine o'clock. And once it's nine o'clock, do it again. F, easy move, undo the F. And there you go, you've got that straight line. Now when you do it to the straight line, the next time you do it, you're gonna get that yellow cross. So let's do it to this one. I'm holding in the nine o'clock position. F, easy move, undo the F. I've got the straight line. F, easy move, undo the F. And I've now got that cross. So here are all the different versions you can get of the yellow cross that's not the fish. Remember, that's the goal. How do we get from here to here and then to the top face being completely yellow? where well, there is a seven move sequence. There's actually a variation of the easy move and it goes something like this. It starts exactly the same. So right clockwise, up clockwise, right anti-clockwise. But now instead of up anti-clockwise, we're gonna do another up clockwise. So R U R U is how we would notate that. And then we do it again, R, but this time, instead of doing one U, we're gonna do two U's. U, U, or U2, and then close this, R prime. And there you go, fishy, fishy. Of course, they're not just all gonna turn into the fish immediately. It actually only works if this yellow plus has two other corners that are solved as well. Plus, you've gotta move that upper layer such that there's one yellow color on this corner that's facing you right there. If you hold it that way, it'll work. So same move again, R, U, R prime, and then a U, and then do it again. Uh, you two are prime. Fishy, fishy. But what do you do if there are no extra corners at all? Just do it wherever. So here we go. Uh, you are prime, you. Uh, you two are prime. And now that we've got this case, we can hold it such that. See, it doesn't work if it's like this. It only works if it's like this. That yellow piece sort of facing me over there in the top left. And then uh, uh, you are prime, you. Uh, you two are prime. And there's my fish. Now what? How do we turn this into completely yellow? Well, guess what? You hold the fish so that it's pointing that way. Same as before, but this time you know that yellow thing is up the top. And then do that same move. Ah, uh, you, ah, uh, prime, you. Ah, uh, you two, ah, uh, prime. Ta-da! It doesn't always work instantly with the fish. And so sometimes you might do it. And then it's like, hey, it's a fish again, but that's all right. Orientate the fish like this and just go a second time and you will get it. By the way, that seven move sequence is called the soon. It's a pretty famous one. Just thought you should know. 
If you've reached this point, Jimmy, well done, because this is the final step. We're gonna learn now how to move these pieces around so that we can solve this third layer. Now brace yourself because this is the hardest one of all. I'm now gonna teach you two algorithms that have got quite a few moves. So don't worry, I'm gonna break it down so it'll be quite easy for you to learn and maybe even memorize. So even though the edges might all look really different, there's actually a really systematic way we can get it done using those two algorithms. And it looks like this. Oh wait, any one of them. Okay, so think of it this way. The first sequence I'm gonna teach you swaps these two corners around. And the second one I'm gonna teach you swaps these three edges in this anti-clockwise direction. Well, let's start with the corners. Sometimes you're really lucky and you get a case where all the corners already perfectly line up, but more often than not, you're gonna get something like this. So the first thing we're gonna do is move this upper layer around to see if we can align at least two of the corners. That's, it's always possible to do that. So let's align this one, red and blue with that. Do we have any others that are aligned? Nope, that's not good. So let's align this guy, orange and green. Ooh, that one's aligned. That one's aligned, leaving only these two that just need to be swapped around with each other, which is perfect for that first algorithm that I'm about to teach you. Here we go. So it starts with the easy move. It ends with something like the easy move and then has a few other weird turns in the middle. So starting with the easy move and then we go R prime front, R two, and then U prime, R prime, U prime. And then we do the easy move at the end, except instead of going R U R prime U, we go front, as you can see, that's all that's missing. There we go. And look at what that achieved. All of the corners are right, leaving just the edges that need to be moved around. That's a really long sequence, you say. True, but let's break it down again to see if it's easy to remember. Easy move, and then three moves that sort of only use the right hand, if I put my thumb in front, R prime F, and then R2, which is two R moves. And then the left index finger joins in for a bit of fun. So that, U prime. And I'm gonna bring this one back to where it was. U prime again, and then finally the easy move that ends a little bit differently with that F prime. By the way, that wonderful sequence was called a T perm. And this brings us to our very final step, the sequence that's gonna rotate these three pieces in this direction. So you can already see that doing that to this cube is actually gonna solve it because it's gonna move blue over there, green over there, and orange over there, but that's okay because you do it a second time, it'll solve it. And this sequence goes something like this. It's entirely made up of R moves and U moves and they always alternate. It's like R U, R U, R U, R U, but in different directions. So let me go through it quickly and see if you can detect a pattern. R clockwise, U anti-clockwise, R clockwise, U clockwise, R clockwise, U clockwise, R clockwise, U anti clockwise, R anti, U anti, and then R2. Just as predicted, that didn't actually solve it, but doing it one more time will. Did you see a pattern though? Here's a hint think of it in R U pairs. So clockwise, anti, clockwise, 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 anti, 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 and then R2. There's a really nice pattern to it, isn't there? The first four pairs are actually palindromic. Clockwise anti, clockwise, 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 clockwise anti, and then an anti anti, and finally just an R2 to finish it off. Oh, by the way, I solved the cube. Hooray! <laughs> yeah, sort of forgot what the purpose of this whole thing was for a second. By the way, you might sometimes see final cases like this, where instead of a three edge swap, there's actually a four edge swap. What do you do now? Well, it doesn't really matter. Just hold in any orientation, do that move, Clockwise anti, clockwise, 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 anti, 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 R2. And this should now be a case, there you go, with a three edge swap that can be solved. Okay, let's bring it all together now with a full example solve. First, let's scramble this guy. Orange is perfectly placed to go right in there. And that brings blue really nicely in there as well. Red needs to go in there. And I can do that, remember, by moving this bottom layer across, putting red in, and then bringing it back to where it needs to go leaving green, which is right there, bit of an annoying spot, but I can make it a little bit easy to go in by turning it like that. Uh, I'm gonna move this empty space over there, goes in there, oops, and then bring it back. And that's my white cross. Now let's get the corners in. Uh, the green red is conveniently, I'm holding it just right. Remember this the empty slot that's gonna go in. So put it over um, where it needs to go and let's do a whole sequence of easy moves. And remember to stop when it's actually in. There it is right there. So um, orange, green, I need to hold it such that it's over uh, the bottom right slot. And I think only once, yep, and it's in. Uh, this is blue, red, so easy move. And finally this guy, oh, it's already down there, but it's okay. I can just hold it like this and just keep going. 
Next, let's get the edges in for the second layer. Very conveniently, this one's already lined up, right there, ready to go. So let's move this edge away from where it needs to go. Open that up, move it back, close it. Move it away that direction. Well, the direction that's like that empty slot. Move the front layer up in a way that I can push that in and push it back down. Uh, ooh, blue red, let's do that guy. So once again. And then this one. This one now needs to go to the left. So I'm gonna move it to the right first. And then front, push it in and there. And I think I don't even need to rotate. That guy needs to go there. Let's do that quickly. Done. Do I have the yellow cross on top? No, I don't, but that's okay. I've got this guy. I'm gonna hold it at a nine o'clock position and go F, easy move, undo the F move. And I've now got my straight line. Doesn't matter if I do it like this or like this, by the way, I'm gonna get the same outcome. But F, easy move again. Ta-da, and I went straight to my fish, lucky me. Make the fish point that way and do the soon. So that's easy move, but ending with like another U. And then R, U2, R prime. That didn't work, let's do the fish thing one more time. Pointing that way. And that worked. Uh, let's see if my corners line up. I can get like, two corners to line up like this, leaving these two. So let's do that T perm that's gonna swap these two guys around. So easy move. And then three moves in the right hand. R prime F, R two. Left hand joins in this, this, this. And then easy move, but with an F at the end. Great. Ooh, look at that. This is ready to go. I'm gonna have, need to do this last one once because it's gonna move them this way. Move it over this way. So here we go. Uh, clockwise anti. Clockwise, 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 anti. Anti, anti. Bob's your uncle. It'd actually be pretty funny if you did have an uncle called Bob. I'm not necessarily recommending this, but just in case you want to take a bit further, you might be wondering, okay, but how do people solve a cube in like five seconds? Short answer, I'm not totally sure. I take between 10 and 15 seconds myself, but the way we do it is in essence exactly what I just taught you, just with a few shortcuts. So let's scramble the cube. And the first thing to say is that we get pretty good at figuring out really quickly how to solve that cross. So looking at this, for example, I can see, I don't know, about four or five moves to solve the cross just because of experience. One, two, three, four. There you go, my cross is solved. Next, instead of spending time getting a wide corner in first followed by the edge, we actually learn a whole series of moves that let us get them both in together. So for example, I know these two need to go over there, which is where the orange um, green slot is. And I just know that this is what I need to do. And it's done. Ta-da! I'll keep going if you like. So this guy and this guy need to go in here. And I can do that like this. This guy and this guy need to go in over here and I can do it like this. And finally, these two need to go in here, which I can do like that. And then for this next stage, there are actually 53 different combinations of what the top can look like with all, you know, the yellow bits all around. And those of us who are crazy enough, um, learn algorithms for all 53 of those cases so you can do it in one go. You didn't think it'd be easy, did you? And then finally for this last stage, there are 21 different combinations of what these side colors can be. And once again, we memorize how to do all 21 cases. And that, Jimmy, is how you solve a Rubik's Cube.